Everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to the first episode of my new rebranded podcast. It's not until the last drop anymore. It's called Smoochie Town because God forbid I keep talking about it on every podcast. And that's when I go to a girl's house or to a restaurant and take her to Smoochie Town. Give her a little kiss on the lips or the cheek. I don't know where, but it's fun. So before we get to our very funny guest today, let's start her off. Let's start her off. First drop of the week of Smoochie Town. And yep, you guessed it. I met a girl on Raya and she is of influence. She is of famous influence. Her dad was a famous pop star. That's all I'm going to say about it. So we matched on Raya, beautiful girl. And she actually slid into my messages. She said, are you a night owl? That's all she said. And I, I didn't know what to respond. I was flabbergasted that she even initiated the conversation. So I say, who, who? That's what I replied. And then she was like, do you want to meet me at midnight tomorrow night? And I was like, am I about to have sex with this girl right off the bat? Is she just a little freaky in the sheetsies? So we meet up at Barry's Kitchen at midnight and they didn't have alcohol, right? But she was fine with that because she just got out of an AA meeting. That's why she wanted to meet later in the day. So I guess she's not that fun. You know, I like alcohol you know, especially on a first date. So I pre-gamed it. I pre-gamed it. I'm kind of drunk meeting her at Barry's Kitchen. But they didn't have alcohol and they didn't have coffee either of her liking. So we went to a Denny's on Sunset. I think it's a Denny's. Yeah, right across me now. And we had conversations about life. She read my palms. We had a lot of coffee. I'm not even a coffee drinker. It gives me anxiety. So, and then we go back to my place at four in the morning. She comes in my bedroom she sits on the ground and she taught me grunge style. We had a lot of laughs. She was actually a really cool girl. And then an hour later at 5 a.m., I walk her out and guess what? I took her to Smoochy Town. Yes, I did. The next day, she messages me saying, I liked it when you kissed me last night. And I was like, oh, you liked it when I took you to Smoochy Town. And then two days later, I'm at the club and she hits me up. She sends me a message of her and her cats playing, you know, a little selfie style video, super cute. I'm behind the DJ booth at Nightingale. And I FaceTime her. Uh, she picks up. She's on the phone for two seconds. And then she hangs up. I guess she didn't like me behind the DJ table at Nightingale. So the next day, I felt super bad. And I wanted to keep seeing her. So I was like, hey, do you want to go to the movies tomorrow night? And maybe get some smoochy town action. And she says, hey, I think you're a great guy. But I don't think it's going to work. That's a drop of the week. Shout out. Shout out. Uh, I'm not going to say her name. All right, for our guest, for our guest, for our guest, super funny guy. He's the king of crowd work, famous comedian touring around the country. Give it up one time for Will Burkhart. Thanks for coming on, my man. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. How are you? What do you think of that drop of the week? Are you uh, are you on any dating apps or not any dating apps? I have a girlfriend, but uh, hey. I think it's really funny to do all this 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 whole build up and then be like, and she didn't want to hang out ever again. Anyway, so you guys ready to do the podcast or what? Yeah, it sucks, you know, like because we had a good time and it's just her judging me based on I was at a nightclub and she, I guess yeah. I, she doesn't want to socialize in that scene. But so she's just not a nightclub girl. I guess not. I think she just had a bad pass, and that's why she went to AA and stuff like that. Ah, so maybe that sense. was just a bad influence. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, because she doesn't want to get wrapped up in your whole thing. Because you're, you're. I feel like I don't know you super well, but you feel like a like a going out guy. Like you're a guy. I'm a social always, butterfly. Yeah. I just like get energy from other people. I'm an extrovert. Yeah. But, but you go, you go out a lot. How many nights a week do you think you go out? Like going out. Going out, like going out, or just like, oh my god, let's have an old fashioned at Lore Hardware. At least, okay, yeah. <laughs> still counts if you count that. How many nights a week are you out? four okay four or five okay especially yeah, on the weekends because you start thursday and then friday oh my god there's something to do so there's something to do every night in there is i know if you are a going out guy it's kind of hard not to go out all the fucking time in the city but, yeah um, but, but you travel a lot for work a lot yeah arguably too much yeah but we it was funny listening to that because i was like man we could not be in like diff more different places in our lives like you are out here like on the dating scene hooking up with chicks and you're like going out to nightclubs like we couldn't be more opposite really so you're an introvert yeah, but I'm also just like busy. I don't know. And I also like have- Well, I'm busy life. too. Well, no, it's, it's I'm busy in a way of like, I'm always doing, I'm, I'm, you know what it is? It's not even busy. I'm like too focused on stand up, And so I don't ever take time to like go do have, have fun stuff. Yeah. And I have a girlfriend. So it's like, what am I going out? When'd you guys meet? You know? You and your girl. And how'd you guys uh, meet? We met on, <laughs> <laughs> we met on uh, Bumble during COVID. 
Oh wow! Oh, you've yeah. been dating for a minute. For a minute, it's like three years, a little over three years. How was that right during now, yeah. COVID? Because you were skeptical and hanging out with certain people, and yeah, you had your bubble, your bumble bubble, you had a little BB. Yeah, dude, little BB action. Yeah, um, it was. You know, it's one of those things where I was so attracted to her based on her pictures. I was like, I'll risk it all. Really? Yeah. I was like, I don't care. It also, it was like deep into COVID where I was like, like it's at this point, fuck it. Like it, it, whatever. I'm so desperate to like hang out with a girl. <laughs> like I'll, I'll die. I don't really, like it's fine. I'm not that worried about it at that point. And so, uh, yeah, I was just, I was so attracted to her. I remember when she like hit me up that she was going to come to my place. Cause that's all you could do at that point, by the way, Yeah, which is the best, such a cheat code for guys. Like you have to come over. I, I, I don't want it that way. No, you can't but work out. You can't uh, go can't, to the restaurant. Know, like, I would take you to Laura Hardware doing yeah. fashion, but I'm like, ah, oh, it's like, if only how do I have to come here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it was, uh, and so I remember when she said she was going to come over, I was, I was so excited. I was like genuinely excited. Really? Um, and so, and then, yeah, we just, and then I didn't expect her to be as cool as she was and she was fucking awesome. And then we just have been dating ever since. <laughs> How? Cause I wasn't like looking for a girlfriend. Either of us were, we weren't looking for a relationship, but we, cause we both got out of like gnarly ones. Ooh. And so we were like, but we just, we were, it was too easy. We we're like, ah, yeah. Where are you from originally? You know, I grew up in like the Bay area. It's like San Francisco. Okay. Bay area, Do yeah. you miss it comparably but, to like, I, I think LA is just for dating in general. LA sucks. Uh, but well, there's but there's a lot of people though, so it's like you a lot of options. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, just, I don't know if dating sucks, but it's definitely like it depends what kind of girls you're going for. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's they have a lot to like. If girls want to be with like a famous influencer type of dude, it's like a lot to pick from. You know what I mean? So for guys, it's like if you're just a normal guy, yeah, it's tough to compete with these. Motherfuckers, exactly, especially you know? with comedians, because girls love funny people. You know, because sure. the number one fear in the world isn't death, isn't uh, sharks, it's public speaking. Dude, I forget that, and I remind myself of that like once a month. I'm like, oh yeah, like what we do is like people's biggest fears. Yeah, the shit I do every night is people's skydiving. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh? Where's your favorite place to perform? A uh, couple. I mean, like, are we in LA or out anywhere? We'll start with LA and then we'll branch out. Oh, uh, I mean, I love, uh, I do comedy magic club a good amount. That's become one of my home clubs Who's that? in Hermosa. It's a, uh, oh, okay. yeah. And, uh, that's I'm very grateful. It's like a hard club to get into and I kind of like finesse my way in. So that, that feels great. And I did flappers last night, underrated club fucking rocks. It was is, packed. Is that in Burbank? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I also will just go up anywhere. I haven't gotten into like the main clubs yet, which it's, it's also like, it doesn't matter. If you're in at the clubs or not, it's like you can still be well, like the store successful. factory yeah, improv. Yeah, yeah, it's more. Of I just feel like, like, how do you not in those clubs? You're, I'm not super like I don't know. I, I well, I haven't like done the thing where I'm like I focus all my energy on like I just want to get past at the store and I'm hanging out there every night. Like I don't care. I'd rather just go do a set than like try to get into a place. Oh, um, like, yeah, and also like my my success is also fairly recent, so not a lot of people. Some people still don't know who I am, um, which is fine. And I, my time will come. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, because a lot of your set, I've seen you perform a couple times. Uh, it's a lot of crowd work. So do you ever get like, do you base it off that or do you have your like 10, 15 minutes and then try to like, do you ever just go on stage and just do crowd work? Um, No, I don't. Uh, I remember the la I remember the show we did together last. We did Bryson's show. And, <laughs> the brewery? <laughs> and uh, dude, I for real, like, that's funny you say that because in my in-town sets, I don't really do that much crowd work. I'm going there like on a mission to work on various jokes everything i'm doing on stage there's like a reason for it even like oh i open with this joke like there's a reason i'm opening with it right and if i try out there's like every joke has a there's a purpose so if i'm up there just doing crowd work it's like i feel like i'm not being productive like i know i can do crowd work to a certain extent i don't mm -hmm. consider myself the king of crowd work i yeah. think I'm, i've gotten better at it for sure but there's but that show is it was so fucking chaotic and wild <laughs> that so it was like random. i can't just go up there and be like hey a joke hey high school jokes or whatever it's yeah. like dating it's like people aren't it was such a chaotic shit. You had to like tap into the crowd. You mm -hmm. had to go in and, and fuck with people to like, to get them on your side. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so it's funny, but yeah, that show for sure. I was like, what? I mean, what a mess. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to do, had to do some crowd work. Around the country, you know? where's your favorite place to perform? Um, cities I love would be like Denver, um, Chicago. Did you perform Zanies, Chicago? Is that yep. Did Z Zanies there? sold it out. Um, Ooh, and, nice. uh, no, and, uh, <laughs> New York I love and yeah. Those are some those are some good ones. Those are big cities. I'm trying to think like like deeper cuts would be. I mean, Nashville was really fun. Uh, I've never been to Nashville. Never. I heard it's a lot of fun. It was cool, dude. That was I actually I rarely go out. Even on the road, I rarely go out. I usually do the show and like by that time I'm. I'm what do you do for fun and, then? Uh, um, n nothing. No. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I honestly, bro, I'm so busy during the day with like editing and writing and stuff. I I don't have a ton of time to do. Like, I try to work out when I can. I watch a lot of sports. Try to hang out with buddies when I can. Hang out with my girlfriend, and like that's pretty much it, dude. Do I, don't, I don't have a lot of time. No, we don't. Uh, not yet. Yeah, yeah, we will. But just I I I've uh, I made the choice to like not rush into that because I'm like 
I don't know. Well, once you once you once you move in together, that that's it. You're that's it. You can't be but like, well, oh, take a year off. It's like, no, that's it. Yeah. And I'm excited, but I just want to do it, like not rush into it. There's no re- it's like we will do we'll do it. Yeah. People rush into that shit so quick. How old are you? 30. 30? Yeah. You look younger. You have a baby face. Let me tell you. Great. Even with a beard. Great. Keep it coming. I need it. That's yeah. right. Because <laughs> this business, bro, you I want to look young as long as possible. Exactly. And I think that's a big thing, is like I don't really drink that much anymore. And I think that helps a lot. Because you, you look at people who look bad for their age, a lot of times it's booze. Really? Mm-hmm. God damn it. That's I why I look like freaking 38. So I'm 28. Are you? You're 28? No, I look older, right? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I would say to like, like think definitely like be a little careful. I've just seen yeah. it. I've seen like, I know two people that I won't say two comedians that are like the same age and one like boozes hard and one doesn't drink. And it's like drastic how different they look. So you don't so even just, drink yeah. um, before. Cause when I first started, I'd have, I'd get like pretty pretty under the influence to go on stage sure and it was terrible and yeah. now like i'll i started hosting at the improv and stuff yeah which is cool yeah and i'll only have like one glass of wine before my set just like because i like wine sure uh and i can relate to the crowd more i'm more like yeah. sharp and it's just like not sloppy and mm-hmm. you have to treat it as like it's a job you shouldn't be drunk at your freaking job yeah that's exactly what it is like i i've toyed with that a few times where i, I because it's me i'm always looking for like, how do I make my brain like fire the best as possible? Like, how can I be as sharp as possible at all times? Like, what's the recipe to do that? Like, it, smoking weed the night before a show, having a drink before the show, how much coffee I have, at what point do I have caffeine? How close to the show? It's like I'm thinking about really? all these things to make sure my brain is at like full capacity. So, what's your concoction? You know I mean? So, right now, I stop. I did there. Were, I did some shows in Florida where I did like tequila like before every set. I did like a weekend, so I did five shows. And I, Jesus Christ. and I did like, you know, like a, probably like a double tequila before each set. And it was cool. It kind of had me loose. Like I wasn't drunk. I wasn't, you know, it just, it made me like excited and loose. But then I was like, you added it up. I'm like, bro, this is like the most unsustainable lifestyle. Literally yeah. like a double tequila. It's like four shots of tequila a night. And for three nights, I was like, this is insane. Yeah. So I stopped doing that. And I think it's just, uh, I think just having, you know what I, you know what I do? What I love is that I'll do like a strong coffee. I'm a big coffee guy. I'll okay. do a strong espresso thing in the morning. And then if I'm staying in hotels, which I usually stay in the same type of hotels, I'll do the hotel coffee, you know, that drip free shit. In the yeah. lobby. I'll do that kind of all day, really, kind of all day. I'm like drinking that not, and I'm not like wired or anything. I'll try yeah. to like do a workout, keep, you know, bring the coffee. I'll bring the coffee to the club and still be sipping it. But I mean, but I'm like, I'm on this level. I'm just in this <laughs> level of baseline. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, a little bit. But it's fine. No, because I re up right before we go. I'm yeah. I'm always like dripping it in there. Um, pause. But uh, yeah, it's my concoction. It's just a little bit of caffeine. But I can't do it too soon to a set because then I get shaky and I have this thing where my hands shake. A- anyways, <laughs> just and so like right now, this is you have me. Parkinson's on stage with a microphone. I have a thing called it's called a benign tremor where my hands are always pretty shaky. Like this is not me like fucking around. This is how my hands always are. And so caffeine makes it worse. So if I have caffeine hella close to a set and you're sitting front row, your boy's shaking. And, it's like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, he's he's really nervous right now. Yeah, that's what I think they think. They're like, oh, does he? It almost makes you because I think what's big about stand up is that you need to make sure that the crowd trusts you. Mm. That's a huge thing. And that's why that first minute's so important is because they're like, oh, can we trust this? Does he got it? You got to get them on does your side. Does he got it? Like, yeah. does we, can we trust this guy to make, have us have a nice time, right? So if I'm up there shaking, <laughs> Johnny nervous up here on stage, people are going to be like, does this guy got it? Like, I don't know. Yeah. And so those are the things I kind of think through. Have you tried shrooms? I have. Yeah. I, love I fucking love microdosing. Like yeah, the chocolates. Great. Yeah, I, the chocolates are great. I really, I think it's fucking awesome. I yeah. love that that's becoming more acceptable and I think it's going to become like, more common than drinking it's honestly safer one. absolutely oh and my god i've seen an influx of you know the younger generation like gen z i, I would consider us millennials yeah 28 30. I, I say millennial yeah but i don't even know anymore me either i don't know i don't like to put labels on myself uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh they will do like they microdose instead of drinking one because it's cheaper and a lot of kids are broke sure yeah right definitely like i spend Especially every time go i go out here. on a date every time i go out 300 dollars Oh my God. Yeah. Cause I'm going to Soho house. Like I'm going to like nice days cause I want to sure. impress the girl. Sure. But then I'll leave, I won't even get taken to smoochy town. So it's not even worth it. Well, what the fuck man. Right. I'm not expecting <laughs> anything in return for my investment. Sure. However, it's like, come on. Yeah. I feel you. I feel it. Yeah. Shrooms are great. I, I dude, I did like a, like a, like a heavy micro dose and like hang with a buddy. <laughs> you did a macro dose. <laughs> well, but it's not like, cause I've done, <laughs> I know, no, very fair. I've done the like full trip, like multiple, I, me and my girl will usually go to like Joshua tree or something like once Dude, every Joshua like, is the best months. place, bro. And we've been a big bear. We did Malibu and we'll just like do a thing every like three, four months, do like a real legit mushroom dose. And it's uh, it's fucking awesome. 
but I did the like probably three, four squares or something like that. Like kind of like a microdose, but you're like a little like, oh, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and I had so much fun, dude. It's just, and it was so I'm controlled. I'm not spending yep. all the money. Yeah, bro. There's no smoochy town happening, hopefully, because <laughs> I'm with my buddy. Um, but it was just, it was like, I was like, wow, this is a really fun thing to do. And you were you're fine after, you know, it wasn't no like, hangover. There's no come down. You're just kind of like, bro. Oh, it's, it's so I'm, I'm, I, I'm expecting it to be like way more common. There's this new thing. It's called magic mind too. And it's not necessarily psilocybin, but mm -hmm. it's like a shot you take every morning and it's filled like nootropics, oh, lion's yeah. mane. It's popular amongst a lot of podcasts right now. I like, think my girl actually uses that. She has a thing you you drip in the thing. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. This one's yeah, just a shot dude. pre and dude, it doesn't even taste bad. And it's just a steady flow state of energy throughout the day. Yeah. It's insane. Like that's what I prefer. Cause sometimes you don't know, like if you take one of chocolate, you don't feel it. You take two and you're on the fucking, you're on sure, your ass. Sure, 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 sure. But I love it, bro. I, I think it's definitely going to be legal soon. I think it's you legal know, it in some pretty states. Much, you can go, I know you can go to a store and just buy some. I know that for a fact. Cause we've like gone to, the, there's a store. Oh, really? Yep. Which can I have you know, There's a dispensary in Sherman Oaks called like the Higher Path. I Bro, I it. in my backpack I have a T-shirt. They give you a free T-shirt. Oh yeah, time to go. The gray and black one. one. Yeah. Yep. And uh, there's a place Should've next to it called uh, the other door, uh, the other path. Oh, that's, that's smart. For, that's for mushrooms. You just get like chocolates and stuff like that. Yeah. So what's your like so, uh, process in writing jokes? Do you take shrooms? Because I feel when I'm on shrooms, I think of shit more creatively and whatnot. Mm. And like, because what's your writing process? Because to be honest, mine, I'm recently into comedy. Like yeah, in the past super, year or two. How long have you been doing stand-up for now? Bro, to be I tell people longer, but usually like <laughs> the real answer. Year. A year. A year, yeah. Not even. For sure. And now I kind of have imposter syndrome of like why do I get to host these shows? Oh, the sure. and stuff. Of, like yeah. I don't deserve it. These guys have been going to open mics for all their sure, life. Sure. That makes sense. And but it's know, not it's not about but it's it's a it's this town's about just connections and like and that's your, why I've with. networked my way, which is a skill of mine. You know, to mm -hmm, be able to mm -hmm, go somewhere mm -hmm. and just like genuine relationships and building off of that. And yep. I'm also a good laugh too. I'm not just like bringing a bunch of people out, you know? For sure. Because you can't just do that. But my process is whatever happens to me throughout the day, I think it's funny and I write it down and then I try to write on it and elaborate it later mm -hmm. and see if it can be turned into a joke. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what's your process yeah. like? I mean, a similar type. I It's funny. I do like 90% of my writing in the car on the way home from a set. Um, meaning that's not safe. No. And I found a way to make it safe. I found a way to make it safe. I'm like a fucking notebook yeah. um, or on like my windshield. I'm like, um, no, I, I, I do a thing where I have my phone on like a dock thing as I'm driving and I, and I hit uh, like a video and I record myself, uh, oh. like talking out, uh, talking out. I did it last night and like, yeah, I'm, that's pretty much how I, like, I, I, that's like honestly how I can, mainly how I can write. It has to be after a set. It has to be like the only, that's the only way my brain is like in stand up mode. The synapses are firing and I'm, it's so fresh and the, the feelings are so there. Yeah. Waking up in the, waking up in the morning and writing stand up is something I've never understood how to do. Cause I'm just like, I'm not in stand up mode. I'm like drinking, yeah. I'm like doing everything else. And so I just need to be like around a set. Um, and for another, for example, it's like I did comedy magic. There's two shows, six and eight. And after the six o'clock, I just walked and like sat by the beach and just like, wrote right well, you're always back. better your second show because you're warmed up i feel yeah for sure i mean for sure you're definitely a little bit better um depends on the crowd but yeah so i tried i can only write basically after after shows and as of now that could change but that's just what i found when did you start most effective i started nine years ago nine years ago so um, 21 20 yeah 21 and yeah what got, what 20. were you doing before and what got you into comedy itself um, were you always like the funny kid in high school college only amongst my friends i was never like the class clown okay. it would be like if i had friends in my class i was killing but if it was like, if I was just me and like everybody was like an acquaintance, I was like super quiet, very shy, very introverted, like kept to myself. Um, but if I had friends in the class, I would get like C's because I was just like fucking around so much and making them laugh. Yeah. Um, I did, I, it was, I did it once in high school for a class project, um, an English class. It was a thing called the challenge project, which it was do something that challenges you. And I was like, I'm going to go do stand up comedy. And uh, so I did it once. And uh, oh, like a club, was very, like an open mic, yeah, like a San Francisco open mic. Oh, yeah, sick. it was wild, just amongst a bunch of adults. And I'm just like 17, I'm just like, ah, it was crazy. <laughs> I like blacked out. And then I did it once when I was 19 again, and then 21, my senior year of college. I was like, I think I can like do, like, I'm gonna like for real do this. And I did it a few times and I just never stopped. And then I moved to LA after a year. So I moved right to LA because I was, because I'm a West Coast guy and I don't want to be in the Midwest. So yeah. I was like, right when my college was done, I was in LA like a week later. Where'd like you go right to school? there, uh, DePaul in Chicago, DePaul. I went to film school there. 
Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And so I was, uh, I was out of there. Went, went right to LA. Do you miss Chicago? I love no. Chicago. Chicago is like a clean New York, in my opinion. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I, I like that. You know? Less, a little less crowded too. New York's fucking yeah, stressful. Yeah. It's just stinky, dude. New York's I tough. I hate it. New I don't York's like tough. it. Yeah. I like New York in moments and in neighborhoods. I like certain neighborhoods, you know? Yeah. Like my uncle, my aunt and uncle live on the Upper West Side and I stay with them and I'm like, I love this place. <laughs> but then I, you know, crash on a couch in the Upper East Side and I'm just like, bro, this is gnarly or whatever. You know, it's like, you, yeah. it depends where you are. Um, and I don't miss Chicago at all. There's a reason I left. It's too cold. It's miserable. I don't know how people live there. It's fucking terrible. You wake up and I'm like, I gotta go to, go to class and it's like zero degrees. There's yeah. no degrees. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> and the wind chills like negative 20. I'm like, this is not inhabitable. Like, why do people still live here? You can leave. Yeah. But, but the summer is the fucking best though. Yeah. Summer in Chicago is crazy. I did it when I did Zany Chicago in May and it was just like beautiful weather, mm -hmm. old town, like the best part of Chicago. It's, 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 it's the best in the summer, but that's like three months. Exactly. But LA, it's literally every day. I know, dude, it's like underrated. The weather shit is so boring to talk about, but the more I've traveled, the more I've been like, dude, this is like underrated. Yeah. It's a quality of life. It's a way of life. It it's is. like, it's a equinox, thing. nice weather. Sure. Smoochy and, town. And it's smoochy town. Yeah. That's, that's what LA's all life. about. Come on. <laughs> Come on. What, uh, if you weren't doing comedy, what would you like be doing? Cause you went to school for film. You want to be yeah. a director or actor? Um, I wanted to be an actor and a director when I was young. Um, and then, well, I wanted to be in entertainment in some capacity. I didn't really know what I knew acting was the first thing, but I just, I didn't want to go to theater school and just be a guy who's like waiting tables. And that's my life. Just like yeah. fingers crossed waiting tables. That sounds like I like couldn't do that. I, I, I'm too much of like a, I always have to be doing something. I can't just wait around. That's mm -hmm. what's great about stand up is you can go do it every night if you want to and yeah. more control over the craft. Right. And in acting, you, if you're the best actor, you may not get the thing. If you're the no, best comedian, no. you, will. you will get the thing. You will. If you, that's if so you fucking true, dude. Yeah, if you crush so hard and people, like, you are, you will, and you're not a complete piece of shit. Yeah. Even if you are, bro, if you're crushing that hard, you can still kind of be a piece of shit and be successful if you're yeah. that funny and you sell that many tickets, right? Yeah. But being an actor, it's like you are the best actor. You are unbelievable. It does not matter. Some of the best actors I've ever seen perform are in acting class and they don't book. It's just because one, it's a relationship town, like you said, sure. and the marketability. And it just sucks that you can go your whole life and never book anything, and you're an amazing actor. That's why. But I if couldn't. you're fucking funny, you're gonna book. But the hard part is how to be that funny. That's the hard part. Yeah. Is how to be that undeniably good. How That's do why stand up is so hard. How do you grow as a comedian? You can't, like, you can read books, you can, like, but it's life experience. There's no cheat code. There's nothing. You just have to do it every night and fail all the time for years. And did you fail a lot at first? Yeah, bro. Bombed so much, of course. Really? That's a part of it. And you, if you can get through the sadness of that feeling, you just keep going and then you and then you start to feel yourself getting better and then you're like, "Ooh, like you feel it. You're like, "Ooh, that feels different. That this feels like a different thing up here." Yeah. And then you start to get I started to get addicted to that. That feeling of growth. I was like, "Whoa." I can feel myself getting better. Wow. Yeah. I kept feeling these like, I like every, you know, I like kind of level up. I was like, ooh. And I still have these moments where I'm like, oh, I feel like I just, something's something clicked more. I'm getting more comfortable. I'm getting a better, better writer. You can feel it. And so I think it's, it's that's what I love about stand up is it is so hard and you have to just do it so much. You do. At it. You know, there's no, you can, you can, you can socialize your way into spots a little bit, right? Yeah. Which is awesome. And that's a huge part of it. The hang is so underrated also is people, it's like being able to be a good hang and not weird. Yeah. It's like underrated. Like Bobby Lee took me on the road without ever seeing me do stand up. He just like liked my vibe. And How'd you meet him? And put me up in front of like sold out uh, Denver for a whole weekend. I did a half hour. Never saw me do stand up. No way. Only based off he like liked my vibe. Where? Where'd you meet? Like I met him at the comedy store through like Brent Morin and Jason Collins, yeah, yeah. who were like my close friends early on, and they introduced me to Bobby. I love Jason. Bobby. He's yeah. the best. It's like my big brother. And uh, and then and, Bob, and Brent was like, "You should take uh, Will on the road." And Bobby's like, "Okay." And then they had like a they unbeknownst to me, they had like a private conversation off to the side. Where Bobby's like, "Really? Should I?" And Brent's like, "Yeah, he's ready." And then that was it. Really? And, and Bobby just liked how I wasn't like non intrusive. I kind of just like chilled. Yeah, and, like, yeah. Not. I wasn't too like, look at me, look at me. Um, which is very much who I am anyways. And so, <laughs> anyways, the point being, it's like, it's like, because just being a good hang and easy and chill and nice, it's like, yeah, that helps. You yeah. know what I mean? Some people just, you see people who are like so funny at open mic and you're like, and they're crushing and you're like, what's, why is this person not further? It's probably because they're like a not, they're like they're socially, cheesy. they're socially weird. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's fucking hard. And you can man. like sniff out, I feel flattery and shit rather than like genuineness. Absolutely. You know, it's mm -hmm. when like if you're in the green room and stuff and it's like, what can I get out of him? Like, oh, I'm going to try to like, no, it's just be fucking cool. Yeah, and just have a natural conversation. Yeah, just you know? easy, chill. It's I, I always would so much rather be the guy 
in the background, like chilling, not really doing much. And then the guy who's doing too much, yeah. trying to compete with like, you're in the, you're in the green room with like Jessel Nick and fucking whoever, Brendan Schaub or whoever. And then you're trying to like out funny them. Yeah. That I like, nah, dude, I'm not, it's crazy. you can have that. I'm yeah. not like, ever going to be that guy. No. What would you say your worst, not bombing, but like, have you ever had a, like a bad heckling? Oh my God. Not the clock. No, no, I'm just going to ruin the set real quick. Keep, keep, keep talking. Keep talking. Uh, the heck, have you ever had like, what's your craziest story about like a heckler? Um, I mean, this is an easy one. I, I, I was doing shows at the Milwaukee improv. I did one show there and towards the end of my set, well, actually these shoes, funny enough, the shoes I'm wearing, they became untied and <laughs> did someone untie them like from the no stage? they just they just Magic? i was working so hard that they burst open <laughs> and <laughs> I was cr- you ever crush so hard your laces come undone <laughs> um no it was so, you know what's funny is the show actually like kind of sucked <laughs> it was actually like a really weird crowd you know what it was it was too nice it was too nice in milwaukee it was like 85 degrees and i was like i don't expect these people to be in here it's too nice outside yeah they didn't even want to be in there but they bought the tickets so they're like yeah, yeah okay cool, cool, cool. so and uh and what, my shoes became untied and i was like i either tie them and it's a weird five seconds because it's like how do i hold the mic and also tie my do i just put the mic down and just tie my shoe it's like and i was like i'll just not i'll keep them untied acknowledge it make a joke about eating shit and then continue on the show right yeah. And then like, right as I'm about to do my closer, this is bro, this is like 30 minutes later, 40 minutes later, um, a woman like like walks up to the stage and and is like, come here. Like up to the stage right here in front of everyone. She's like, come here, let me tie your shoe. What? Like, come here. And I was like, <laughs> like no security. And normally club security, it was an improv. Club yeah. security was fucking on. Yeah. And she was just standing here. I'm like, no, what do you, no. And she's like, no, I have OCD. I need to tie it. Come here. What? And I'm like, no no and i was like where is there no security yeah and she kept she like wouldn't take no for an answer and i was like what is happening right why is like no one i've never seen i've never experienced anything like that in my entire life and not only is that clip on my instagram um but the but then i i part of the clip i showed my, me basically being like hey where's security at and, the, and i cut to security like taking her out finally right okay and people, and I posted the video and I was like so hyped because I was like, oh, this video is going to like do numbers because it's like so crazy. And bro, like, like the internet was like, fuck you, Will. Let her tie your shoes. You were so mean to this woman. Like, she was just trying to be nice. No she had OCD way. And it turned in this whole thing. I've never gotten that much hate on the internet in my entire life to this day. It was what? crazy. <laughs> you like, thought it was going to go viral. Oh, I was, because it's, I've never seen anything like it. I was so excited to post it. And literally the internet was like, nope, fuck you. You Karen calling security on this woman. Like they didn't understand that that's how, what happens at a comedy yeah. club. You kicked out of a club. That happens, right? Yeah. And it was just, it like turned on me. I lost like a bunch of followers, got like crazy no comments. Way. Yeah, dude, it was gnarly. I talked, I talked about it in depth on, on my podcast, but, um, but yeah, dude, it's like, it was like a very much a thing. I call it shoe gate now. Shoe gate? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But, did you, what's, all right, so contrary to that, what's the best set you've ever had? Oh man, that's a great question. It's been on this tour because for those listening or watching, like I'm on my first headlining tour. Let's go. My life this year. It's a big deal for me. I'm very, very happy and grateful. And uh, there's been a few that were like, whoa. And one of them was actually in Chicago. It was, I did two shows at Zany's and the second show sold out was like so good. It was like a perfect, it was like, there was not one lull. It was perfect. It was one of those where I was like, oh, yeah, it was just like perfect. Yeah, instant shot of heroin right after people coming up to you. It was so nice. Yeah. It was so it was so. And the fact that it was like sold out at that type of club made me it even sweeter. So that was that was probably my favorite, I think. Yeah. Like, there's been a lot of fun shows on this tour because it's like when you're performing for your own fans, it mm. like changes the whole thing. Because when you do stand up, you, you need to basically like imp- like win these people over in a way of like the same thing of like trust me right i got this but if you're doing going up in front of your fans like they already there's already in a level of trust established they're yeah. already like well we like j- the baseline of what you are and so it's so much easier you get to just relax yeah. you don't have to be like oh no you know that you first have to minute, try as much you it's like it's a different type of trying it's like you don't have to kind of be like you know i don't know yeah you know what i'm trying to say and you don't have to like personally invite people out anymore because you just post Right. And you just, yeah. people come out on the road. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. how do you feel about with like Instagram and stuff and like only posting crowd work and not your set? Yeah. How do you feel social media has really yeah. made comedy? I think in the past couple of years, mainly, I think Matt Reif was one of the more first people to really dive into crowd work and like get super famous off of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if have you ever uh, been on a show with him? Yeah, for sure. Early on. Yeah. Cool dude. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Uh, I never did. Never met him super, never don't know him super well, but he's always been cool. Yeah. What's, how do you feel with social media? Has it helped 
or has it made it more kind of like i don't know not as mainstream mm -hmm. you know yeah i mean well i social media is the only reason i have any type of career so like for sure like that's the only reason i can headline is because people have seen all the clips that i post and i think it's it's unbelievable it's the best because you can you can literally uh build and create a fan base from your living room mm. that's insane yeah. Like you can feel, you know, do stand up at night, film your sets, edit them at home, make them good and put them out. And like your life could change. That's like five years ago. That was not even yeah. a thing. And now it's just, you can, I've been, I literally created a fan base yeah. in, on my laptop. How'd you, you know? get like follow? How'd you build that following? I just kept posting. I just, I had like one or two videos that did well and I just kept doing it and didn't stop for, you know, going on three years now, probably it was during COVID when I started putting out videos and I just didn't stop like consistently doing it, making sure also since I went to film school, I had a leg up. And so I already knew a little bit of editing, you know, uh, so some people are like, well, like final, no button. idea. Yeah. yeah. I do premiere, but either way, it's just, I had, a, I already knew the, the basics of everything and I really cared about the quality and making it look good. And, yeah. And, um, and yeah, so I just like kept putting shit out and then a couple clips went dumb and it just kept, kept going. Um, so now it's just all about growth, but it's, it's just, it's do coming up in like the, whatever, like the, you know, the people we've maybe looked up to in our lives coming up in like the two thousands or whatever. It's like, you know how different it was? Like, how the fuck do you get like a fan base? Yeah. You have to get on a thing. And you have right? to go to the club and like do well and meet people there. And hopefully yeah. someone's watching you for real. Just like an actual audition. I prefer mm -hmm. going in person. Yeah. Rather like, than like a self tape. Do you act as well? I do. Yeah. Not as like hardcore, but like I'll, I do generally. Yeah. Hey, the, the, ask me that again. Yes. Continue. <laughs> like, fucking, like, yeah. Own it, baby. I'm like, I'm like this it's way too long. Yeah. Anyways, yes. Does that come from like an acting background? That's why I moved out here. Went oh, cool. Cal Arts uh, nice. for my BFA and I hated it. It was like artsy farts. become the tree bullshit. Mm. Uh, acting classes are tough, man. They I are, do not dude. Like and I just like find, find your classes. ground neutral position and just like, I just don't buy into it. And it's not my cup of tea when it comes to acting. Yeah. And now like throughout my life, I've realized that I don't want to win an Oscar. You know, that mm. doesn't get me hard, you know, anymore. What gets me hard is hosting and making people smile and laugh and like mm. you know mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. i want to be a tonight show host that's what i want to do cool you know i like that man that's really cool uh and just that's why i prefer going in person because you can't really read someone off a video just like i mean in comedy you can but like an audition itself a self-tape right you like yeah, you say your name and height like you don't get the vibe of I someone know, dude because you can't play the room you can't you can't get like get some laughs show your charisma you kind of can't do that so yeah. I, I completely agree with you who are some of your favorite yeah, comedians yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, like right now, I mean, it's it's tough because I don't. Because uh, when you Will doing Burkhart, it that's long, my favorite. You fucking imagine if I said myself <laughs> like, and like wasn't joking about it. Um, that'd be fun. You would kick me out of the podcast immediately, please. And uh, you know what's funny is I don't uh, like consume any stand up at this point in my life. I don't really watch stand up, especially like on my own. I never watch it. Like a you special on Netflix or anything? Ever? No. I Do just, you feel yeah. my buddy Benedict Polizzi? Sure. Uh, he actually, I'll get to the topic of like staying comfortable in Indiana. He's moving to LA, but like he was comfortable in Indiana because the internet. He doesn't live in LA. No, he's moving now. He's actually moving here. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, that's crazy. but he lived in Indiana. He was like, I don't find a reason to because I the internet's in Indiana, and I yeah, was I doing just fine lived, there. I mean, I kind of met him recently, but I thought he lived in LA. Anyways, um, yeah, yeah, cool. But uh, fuck, what were we just talking about? Oh yeah, watching comedians, do you mm. feel like yeah. you'll be influenced? He he thinks that like he'll just copy the comedian, like yeah, for transform sure. into them. Yeah, there's absolutely a big part of that. Yes, for sure. I think I I mean early on that's what you that's what you do when you first start stand up. You're basically just emulating the people that you look up to, mm. and until you kind of find your voice. So there's absolutely a level to that. Like I don't want to watch anyone because you get inspired or like influenced too much, and I start to like mimic their shit for sure. Like mascal goes easy too. Fucking it's too it's too like I can't I need to like be. I have to just, the only stand up I want to hear is my own. Or if I'm at a show and someone's on stage, that's the only stand up I want to hear. And, uh, it will, I'm also just, I also don't really enjoy watching stand up because I'm like, I, I see it every night. I'm like, the yeah. last thing I want to do is watch more of it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, and yeah, and, and there's a level to it of sometimes I get a little jealous where I'll be like, you'll start to compare yourself. Not just, not jealousy, it's more the comparison thing Indeed. where you're like, you're like, how the fuck did they come up with that? Like, that's so funny. Yeah. Why did I come up with that? This guy, mm. is he funnier than me? Like, I get a little in my head with it. So I just, I remove myself. I consume like everything else except yeah. stand up. But when I was com when I was coming up and growing up, I fucking obsessively watched stand up. Yeah. But just at this point, I'm like, all right, I don't need to anymore. Would you say you had you a know? funny childhood, like growing up, like cool stories that you like bring <laughs> back? You know what? Like, I, 
not really because I was so well behaved and I didn't really fuck up that much. Were you a Catholic school kid? Or? No, no. I just like my parents like raised me really well. And I just was always like, I have this thing in my life where it's still thing to this day is that I still always do the right thing. Always. I never like make a decision. I'm like, Oh, this is kind of crazy that I'm doing this. I'm always You're not stealing a pack of gum at self checkout ever, at target ever. <laughs> Ever, bro. See, I, 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 listen, Ever. I'll do a little buy one, get one for free. Sure. You know, People do, man. I have friends that do it all. It's like not in, in an airport. I'm in airports all Oh, time. bro. You know it's the it easiest is? place. I'm not easy, paying $7 bro. for a bottle of water. I get it. I get it. But I have this weird thing. I, I think it's karma. Are you a nerd? It's like, no, dude. And that's what I'm saying, bro. It's like, it's annoying because I wish I had crazier stories, but I'm always too worried about like some karma shit that if you steal water, who knows? It's like something bad's going to happen. Someone's going to rape you. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. And so that's why I'm like, I keep it pretty, I don't know. I just always like try to just do the right thing and be a good guy. I just, I'm like, even still unpacking gum, I'm like, it's going to come back to me somehow. Yeah. Somehow. Which is a good way to think. It is good. It's a very safe. But it's again, I, but I don't have like, I'm not the guy who has like these crazy fucking party stories or when I was a kid, like, oh, I stole my mom's car, drove it on the football field. I'm like, nope. <laughs> I was at home like playing Madden on my PlayStation. Like, you know, yeah. so it's just, yeah. So that's, that's, that's very much who I still am to this day. What were your, some of your uh, you know, go-to things besides being on Bumble during that COVID stint? You know? <laughs> go-to things in Madden? What? In like, what? Oh, Madden? Like, like doing stuff? What do you do? What do you do in you your know free I had time? To do? Oh, in my, in my free time, like during COVID or now? Both. I mean, real. I mean, any truly, habits you pick up knitting? No, not knitting. Um, you know, man, I don't, dude. I because I treat stand up like a nine to five, so like I'm doing shit for work, like the whole editing, day. writing, yeah, yeah, the whole day, pretty much. And so by the time night comes, I'm doing a set, and then I'll go home and and play some Madden, smoke some weed, watch a movie, or like mm. go to my girlfriend's place and hang out with her. So there's not a ton of other time. I don't like. I should be seeing friends more. Basically, is yeah. what I've come to realize. Is like, man, I'm, I'm lonely. Not, that's what I'm saying. I'm not like. Well, that's the problem. Is like, I I like being alone so much that like it gets in the way of like I need to push myself to like go kick it more with people. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I can't, bro. I'm afraid to be alone. I think. Yeah, man. I know. I I know people like that, and it's kind of wild that like you like you are one of those dudes. Like I just. What is it about that? Like why why what are you what are you running from? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like I love meeting people and spend, like i'd rather go to a bar and eat and not even drink mm -hmm. and just socialize with the bartender and meet someone than sit at home and order postmates or Interesting. and it's just i don't know if it's because like I don't, I don't know i need someone to talk to like even if when i get like rich and famous and whatnot like a big house i'm gonna have my boys live with me if i don't have a girl you know because sure i just like i'm just i don't know i don't I know it. what it is and now i got a taste of having a girlfriend when i was 22 mm. 22 25 had a relationship and then right after that right after that to your relationship and now like I'm craving it again. I'm single and it's just like, that's why I'm going on so many dates. Cause like- You want I a want, girlfriend? I want a girl, I'm a girlfriend guy. Interesting. I love mining and dining. I love cool. taking care of someone, having someone by your side. But I don't know if it's, that's a selfish thing to think that, oh, I want some eye candy by me or like or someone like- Well, no, then you just don't have to be alone. I think it just goes back to that. You just can't be alone. No. But what is, why is that? <laughs> I Let's, no, no, I want to dive into this. Why, what do you think that is? Like wh why, have you always been like that? I've always been just like a social kid and just like always having friends over and like wanting to, I have three sisters. Okay. So I don't know if that correlates to anything. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, who knows? But, but what, like when you're by yourself though, like what, what's the feeling you get that makes you go, I got to go to the bar and eat it and eat and talk to the bartender. Like what makes you go, ah, I got to get out of here. Maybe I don't want to be alone with my own thoughts. For sure, which is totally valid, by the way. Like, which aren't I'm, like I'm, evil. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna no, kill I someone. No, I'm the same type of way where I'm, I'll spiral out of control and get super anxious about stuff for sure. But then I just, I just, yeah, just, I go for a walk or something instead of walks are nice, dude. Big walk guy. Slap on a podcast. You listen to podcasts? Big walk guy. Yep, big podcast guy. Big walk guy. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen to Smoochie Town. I will uh, now. What's your podcast called? Just called the Will Burkhart Podcast. Yeah, simple. Burkhart. What is that German? Yeah, it is. Nice, nice man. You fucking nailed it. <laughs> Um, what are you packing down there? What's your schnitzel size? Uh, 12 inches. Next <laughs> I got a five soft, and a half inch soft pepper. 12 soft. Uh, it's really let's get a little raunchy. Where'd you lose your virginity? What where? Age? Uh, what age, what age? I was 18. Uh, where? Uh, a dorm room. Oh, it was in college. In college. You went through all high school. Yeah. So no, you were no, a good boy. Zero, zero attention from girls all of high school. Zero. Were you a nerd? No. I, or did I, you not I care because you were so focused? Nope. I hated school. So I was not focused. I, I did like, I loved like fucking around hanging out with friends for sure. Um, but I, I was like really late to hit puberty. I was like a late bloomer. And so I never, so I just, girls like never, I was just never just the hairless guy. five, two pretty much. Yeah. For real. Like, <laughs> like that's a naked I, mole rat. I didn't like get to be quasi like attracted to girls until like college. 
like like maybe mid halfway through college, I probably got like, oh, okay, he's like a guy. That's nice. He's oh. not just this like pimply, <laughs> like, you know, type of dude, short kind of dude. I've always been the shortest one of my friends, which is not too short. What are you, five, I'm five nine. nine? Yeah. So it's like fine. It's fine. Um, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. You don't fucking worry about it at all. Okay? <laughs> I wear a hoe because I'm five ten. And uh, but it, yeah, I was just never, never girls did not like me. I talk about it in my act. I'm just ne- I was never, never but you're a handsome guy. Well, thank you. Great head of hair. Thank you. Great little beard. Things are fine now. My girl's yeah. beautiful, but yeah. again, took me took me a while to figure it out. What does she do? So she's a therapist, <laughs> for real. Damn, that's why you want to dive into my fucking loneliness. <laughs> I, think it's, dude, I think that shit's interesting, for real. Yeah. Does she man, ever like use? The, does she ever? You can say you can tell when she's like, let's talk about this. No, because she's like mentally exhausted from doing that all day. Okay. So I don't think she wants to be like. Now let's dive into you when I'm done with work. But I, can you ever win an argument? Absolutely not. And that's, a bit, and, that's, <laughs> and that's a bit I'm literally working on right now. Oh, it's really? not about dating a therapist now. I cannot win an argument. Like, mm-hmm. it's basically arguing with a therapist is like, you cannot win. It's like, no. I've never won an argument ever. It's, it's, it's like having like a skateboarding competition with Tony Hawk. Like, I'm fucked. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm doing kickflips and ollies and, and, and she's doing fucking McTwist. backflips, McTwist. Yeah. Talking about my parents' divorce. I mean, it's like so <laughs> many things. It's like so Your many things. Divorce? You know? Divorce? Me too. Yeah. Don't I was eight years like old. That. But yeah. Really? Eight. Crazy. No, no way, bro. Yeah, yeah my dude. dad was, uh, I got to see him Wednesday nights every other weekend. Wow. Now let's talk about this. Yeah, so what was your, what was the, how close do your parents live to each other when they got divorced? Uh, 45 minutes. You got a condo, like 45 minutes in the boondocks in Rhode Island. I'm from Providence. Cool. One of my best friends is from uh, Barrington. Oh, Island. no way, bro. For yeah, that was our, one of our rival high schools because I went to an all-boys Catholic. Cool. Got it. Yeah. Interesting. That could tie into Campy That could tie alone. into it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're unraveling. Where's your girlfriend? Get her in here. <laughs> Um, uh, w- w- uh, remind me, where did we, we went to into Bitland? I forgot what was Oh, wait, we're thing. 45 minutes away. Oh, so, well, parents. Yeah. So yeah. how often did you see them? What was the So schedule? Wednesday nights, my dad would pick me and my sister up because I have three sisters, yep. one true blood, just like that show on CW. Hey. Very cool. Uh, okay. and so she, he'd pick us up and that poster right there for people that can't see it, it says, it says, I said a hip hop, hippie mm-hmm. rappers delight by sugar hoe gang. We each had a different verse in that song we'd memorize. And every time they pick us up, we'd sing it in the car. And that's the fondest memory I have of like wow. us three. Yeah. That's like that scene in Step Brothers where they're singing the song. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, and they're like miserable. Yep. <laughs> Dan Cook, 20 minutes. Let's go. Let's go. Pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, that's interesting, man. Because I had, I my parents lived hella close. Like they were 10 minutes away from each other. And so I bounced back and forth. I did like uh, every other night. So you'd only get through the first verse. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. bro. You do like the fucking long, because those old rap songs, it gets to like a minute yeah. and a half before it gets to the actual lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't make it to the lyrics. But yeah, I did every other night and then every other weekend. Do you, were you, are you closer with one of your parents more than the other? No, I'm very close with both. I lucked out. My parents were like 10 out of 10, both. That's in both awesome. different ways. Yeah. I got like the best of both worlds. Like yeah. my mom's very like sweet, warm, empathetic, quiet. And dad's like social, funny, super uh, like, hardworking like that's crazy, my crazy discipline that's my dad full italian and whatnot my mm. mom my mom's same the sweet but she's also like we'll cut a bitch mm, like like don't mess sure. with their kids do yeah, not mess with their fucking kids yeah, yeah, yeah. one time quick story high school football game this is actually to both my parents uh my mom was in the stands and it was all boys catholic high school and the kickoff team was going out i was an all-american football player by the way hell yeah what, you, what position you play uh, strong safety nice I, that fits you I yeah see you as a it's a pit bull coming up the alley i love it uh so my mom decides to yell somebody fucking hit somebody in the stands whoa and she was next to my principal like two rows up so my principal mr brennan sure uh, turns around and goes uh ma'am can you quiet down that's the last thing you want to say to my mom Mm. spicy italian let me Mm -hmm. tell you and my mom was like fuck you didn't even know who that was my principal and she got banned from all interscholastic football games for the rest of the year oh man follow up my dad and did you play high school football Based on your come stature, on, no. Uh, <laughs> Did I play high school football? Go ahead. So uh, my dad, you, the parents of the home team that runs the chain gang. Mm-hmm. They volunteer mm-hmm. for like the chains and the yardsticks. Oh, cool. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah, exactly yeah. what you're talking about. So my dad was a playoff game against East Providence High School, which it wasn't the best area, right? So okay. the kids necessarily weren't raised the best. It doesn't matter. So some kid, because I was the best player on the team, some kids started talking shit about me in front of my dad who, cause the chain gang is on the opposite side of the field on their sideline. And my dad said, what'd you say about number 20? And the dude turned around, repeated it. 
my dad hit the kid on the head with the yardstick and a brawl broke out and he was banned for life for all high school events. Whoa, not just for a year. No, whole, no, whole career. Whole, whole card. But wow. my dad owned the biggest construction company in Rhode Island, which is a very political Italian thing. So Ooh. after a year, he got back in because uh, he knew the uh, athletic director. What did he state. say? What, what did the person say? Uh, he was like, yo, number 20's a little bitch. We need to lock him up because I was just blitzing and shit. Sure. Uh, and yeah, so and my, like, my parents are spicy. Damn, bro. Did you get into a lot of fights too? Were you a big like fighter? No, it was always Catholic high school. So it was like, you didn't want to get kicked out. And everyone was like oh, pretty yeah. chill. Pretty strict. There's no girls to have to worry about. But right. all the girls loved us because one, you want what you can't have naturally. Awesome that you were that. Do you feel like you, was that like your great, are you still? Is that when I peaked? Yeah, I peaked in high school. For I sure. don't know if I'd like, <laughs> like, that's like, I'm like dancing around saying that, but I also am like, do you, are you still feel like you're kind of like, you, you want to still be the man? A little, like, I don't know. I don't know how else to ask it. It's not like, did you peak, but are you trying to like get, is that what you're chasing? Are you chasing that? Maybe, like, maybe kind of, dude, maybe that's why I can't be alone. Cause I, I need to prove myself all the time that I'm the man or, and it could also be stand up. I'm like the center of attention. I'm the man. I'm, yeah. I'm look at me. I'm, which is not a bad thing. I'm, I do stand up too. So it's yeah. all very selfish, but um, no, it's interesting that you were, uh, did you have to do like pep rallies in front of people and stuff? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I was like a freaking cheerleader basically. This all makes sense, dude. But you didn't I, start stand up until late. No, I slowly started mm -hmm. last year and I really, I caught the bug for sure. Uh, but now I'm getting more comfortable and stuff. Like I've been doing more open mics. I never did an open mic until like two months ago. Wow. What it was all just like ticketed shows at huh. like, Comedy Chateau, Ha Ha, The Improv Lab. And I did it through, like you said, networking. And that's why I have the imposter syndrome about like performing at these places. But I'm growing through that. And yes, I can bring a lot of people out. I can bring like, I average 60 people to the improv. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's insane. And it's just like, people just want to come to me and like, because I just want everyone to have a good time at the end of the day. Yeah, that's dude. really it's, all it's I want. It's a great thing to want. And I think that's, I respect that a lot. And sometimes it's to my own detriment because I'm the last person having fun because I'm too worried about other people's happiness. Yeah, for sure, dude. Where do you think that comes from? Why do you want everyone to be happy all the time? Why do you care that much? I don't know. That's why just like with dating and girls and shit, I care so much that it comes off as too eager mm -hmm. and too like, I can't just play it cool. You know, I'm just like intense. I don't know. Interesting. I mean, these are all good things. You want everyone to have a good time. It's like you're a serial have a entertainer. Yeah. Like, I think that's a really good thing. It'd be worse if you're like, you know, have some other deep shit that you're like, you're very bitter and jaded and shit. Um, but that's cool, dude. It's a good quality. Yeah. But the dating definitely, I think it's because when my parents got divorced, my dad had, he was like late thirties when they got divorced <clears throat> and he had five girlfriends all, for like, all, for, no, <laughs> all under the age of 25 living in the house that he got Whoa. at a year, year, year different. So I kept seeing a bunch of different girls and stuff. Mm. So, and I saw the controlling, the overprotective, the basically insecurities of him growing up and teaching me how to like treat a lady, not in a bad sense, just in a people aren't your possession. Mm. And I think he dated younger girls to show that kind of like power if you will. And that's why I'm learning to deal with those insecurities of like, not worry about what my girl is doing and whatnot. Or like, cause I did get cheated on in the past mm. of like, that's why like social media, Instagram, like that's why I always want to be around my girl because I don't trust her to not be mm. with me. You do you know? like, is that a real thing? Like if you, do you have, I like, wouldn't have said it. Trust issues? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's interesting. Cause I'm not like that. Cause I never, I've never gotten cheated on. So I'm, I'm like, oh, very, wow, never got yeah, I'm a good guy. Uh, <laughs> and no, I never, I'm just, so I'm, I'm like probably too trusting. I mean, I trust my girl uh, for sure. But I, I'm like, I'm even if I didn't, I'd still be like, ah, you know, yeah. unless you give me a reason, 
I'm not like, it's not built into me. People have that shit. Like that shit's built into you to be like, where are you going? What are you doing? What's on your phone? Yeah. I just don't have yeah. That. Like I'd get mad that she wouldn't like, um, comment on my photos or post me on social media. My ex. Wow. That's she so wouldn't post me because I'm like, why aren't you posting me? Are you afraid that to, for, cause wow. you're talking to someone doesn't want to see. Wow. Yeah, dude. But I should just be confident and secure enough that like, you know what you got, mm -hmm. you got me. And yeah. if you do anything to hurt that yeah. or affect that, then you're not the one for me. I'm out. And I learned. For sure. That yeah. makes sense. But that's hard. It's hard to unlearn that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. hard. That's so baked into who you are. It's hard to like, no, I just won't care. And you're like, yeah, I care. You know, I care, bro. Hey, you, <laughs> the picture's nice. We took together. You can post it if you want, but it, all good either way. Exactly. Like, I was like, because yeah. I want to post you and I'm not posting you because you're not posting me. So it's like, it's fucking, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so nice. stupid. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's that's so a, stupid. That's a part of where I like, I fucking hate social media. If we're like relationships, I think social media is really tough because it's almost like you have to prove that you're having a great time. To yeah. Prove that you have a great relationship. I'm like, I don't need to know that. I don't need people to know that. My relationship is mine. I and the less you, you like, care. Oh, look at how great, look how happy we are. I'm like, I know we're happy. Yeah. I don't need them to know. Yeah. I want you to know about my stand up and come see. It's like, so I can take my girl out to dinner. Yeah. I don't need to like show, hey, I'm like, eh. what's your ideal day spot out here? Uh, big sushi guy. I love sushi, bro. Yep. What do you get? What's your order? Uh, I mean, I, I light it up. I get a lot. I mean, we go to this one place. <laughs> oh, I wind it up, baby. Chef's get, tasting on you. Yeah, I get a lot. I get a lot of stuff. But we'll do, we have this one place we go to. I don't want to say where, but it's in, in Studio City. We okay. go to, and it's like our go-to sushi spot that we just, we just go. But yeah, I'm, I'm down. You, I love eating sushi when I'm, I get back from the road. That's my favorite is because I eat the opposite of sushi for like three days straight. You know, I eat like, <laughs> like bur fast food and burgers shit. and bullshit, you know? And then I'm like, what's the opposite? Oh, and I like, it's like post-road sushi. I always get, that's like my new routine. Fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. I love, I just love a little salmon nigiri with light rice. Sure. Spicy tuna rolls, spicy edamame. All good. A little miso. All good things. I'll tell you uh, the um, the place after we record. I'd love to. It's, it's, it's fucking great. Yeah. yeah. But also it's like, it is a million place, sushi places in LA. This is not LA is good sushi, I feel. It's the best. It's almost like too many. You'll go yeah. down Ventura and you'll be, it'll just be like, sushi, sushi, mattress, mattress store, mattress store, sushi, sushi, sushi. That's like, yeah. oh, that's a reference. <laughs> mattress store. That's a reference to people who know what the fuck You live in the valley? About. Yeah. I live in Studio City. Do you like it? I love it. Did I you ever it. live any elsewhere? I lived in Studio City for a while and then I moved to Sherman Oaks. So like pretty close for like a year and then moved to West Hollywood with a girl. And then for like three months, we broke up, broke the lease. Got you broke. moved in with a girl? Uh -huh. In West Hollywood. Lived there for three years, broke the lease. I was broke and then moved back to Studio City. Moved in with a buddy. Um, or no, and I got a place in the the complex that I used to live with a friend in. Got my own place and I've been there ever since. Okay. So, so that's a long way, to, long way to way all the places that I've lived, but I'm, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a Valley guy. Yeah. I, I'm slowly starting to like the Valley more uh, because you can always go to West Hollywood if you want a good time. It's like 15 minutes away. It's right there. Exactly. Pop and it's like cheaper in the Valley. It's more uh -huh. family oriented and Quieter, you don't have to worry about parking as much. Nope. It's the best. Yeah. It's hard. It's a, it's a hard place for me to live. I don't want to live anywhere else in LA. You can make the case that like live closer to LAX because I'm there all the time, mm. but I just don't want to live. You don't go out of Burbank? You know. Lately I do more. Yeah. Yeah. But you just can't, it has to be a, you can't really do nonstop. Mm -hmm. So Burbank, but you got to do a layover, which so, is worth it. So you're a 49ers guy? I am actually. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing pretty well this year. You're right. Is Brock I'm, Purdy the answer? I think so. He's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan. You I'm, guys you know, lucked out on McCaffrey. Let me tell he's you. awesome, dude. That guy rocks. Um, he's so, he looks like a fucking G.I. Joe I played with as a kid. Yeah, He's like the dude. most handsome. I'm like, how do you look like that? Were you bro? an action figure guy growing yeah, up? Yeah, dude. Bro, I had all the WWE guys. Ah, uh, those are fun. I was a big Star Wars action figure guy. That was that was my that was my bag. Are you, so you are a nerd with like the not Star really, Wars, though. Lord I'm of the really Rings? not. I liked like Star Wars, not Lord of the Rings. Don't fucking talk to me like that. <laughs> um, um, no, I really wasn't that nerdy because I didn't care about school. I was like, this shit sucks. Why am I like, you know those kids who would like stay up all night studying? Yeah. I've like never done that yeah. in my whole life. I was like, I don't care enough. Why am I, what, this isn't my thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I've recently got back into football though. I didn't pay, when I started stand up, I was like, well, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with sports. Like I cared more about fantasy baseball than I cared about school. Um, fantasy baseball. Yeah. That's de fantasy baseball, basketball, and uh, hockey. It's too much time because you that's have to what, keep adjusting your lineups. That's football what I just once a week, baby. No, nah, that's what I liked about it. I wanted the work. I put the, I like, was oh. legit. I was a nerd with that. I feel like I was managing an actual team. Dude, for real. It was so fun. I love, I was obsessed with it. Um, then I started stand up and I, I didn't have the mental capacity and bandwidth to like keep following sports. And I just gave, I didn't follow sports for legit like six, seven years at all. Like zero. I couldn't name any players on any teams. I was really? Out. Yep. Didn't even watch playoffs. Didn't give a fuck. I was when so did you focused. get back into it? Like two years ago, three years ago, for real. Like I, I started following basketball like during COVID. You know why? Because it was the only thing to do. Bingo. You know what fucking fucked me up? Mm. Sports gambling. 
Oh, I got into sports yeah, gambling during COVID because there was nothing else to do. Yeah, and like, dude. I wanted a horse in the race. I wanted an itch. I had an itch that needed to be scratched. I and you. I lost $27,000. I mean, come on, bro. That's an insane in amount of money. In two years. That's an insane amount of money. I know. How are you making money? Uh, a lot of commercials and shit. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm a commercial actor. That's probably my bread and butter when it comes. And I get paid... Like a couple hundred bucks for the stand up shows that I do. That's not real money. No, yeah. it's not real money. Wow, dude. That's all that's fucking A, man. Dude, Sports and I wrote people. notes on my fucking loose leaf paper and stuck it to my wall saying, like, you could have put your nieces through college. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a lot of money. And I did the tally mark, this uh, and that. And I kept having to take it down after a few days. Cause you, 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 I just got bored and I like, yeah. I lost the energy to watch sports without having a horse in the race. And now I'm finally sober yeah. from it. I had a little relapse in the beginning of the season. Okay. Lost a couple grand, but now I'm back. Still a lot. Still, you dude, I'm not proud. Lot. Yeah. Cause the $50 bets weren't doing it anymore. I had the, oh, I had the man, betting, bro. Dude. It's a dude, sports gambling. I'm not addicted to alcohol. I love alcohol, but I can stop drinking. Yeah. Uh, Cause I still have that work ethic from high school where I didn't like, I'm an all or nothing guy. This is moderation is for cowards in my opinion, you know, okay. either I'm not Fam drinking. I'm not. Famous last words, but yeah. continue, <laughs> continue, continue. It'll say that when you, it'll say And I was just filming away uh, for a month in Malibu for the reality wow, show. Wow, that's really funny. Dude. But on the show, we only had like two drinks per night. So basically it was rehab for me. <laughs> yeah, no shit. That they, could, they only let you drink two drinks, two drinks per night. night. Because the comedy from the show, it's a sarcastic bachelorette, the show itself. I don't know if you've ever seen it. You probably won't, but it's fine. Clips, but I would, now, well, now that I know people, because you, Benedict also. Me and Benny, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to, are you guys both on it this This year? season, he came in a little late. Yeah, him and his, our brother, di brotherly dynamic is fucking fantastic. I, I want to watch a little bit of it just because I know you guys now. Yeah, that's yeah. more fun for me. It's, it's like sports gambling. I'll, I'll gamble on you <laughs> <laughs> well, gamble on me, baby. I'm gonna get it. it. Man. Uh, before we head out, took too much of your time. Do you want to plug anything? No, your podcast. I'm happy to chat. Yeah, just go. Um, honestly, go see me on the road. I'm more. Go see me on the road. I'm coming to. Uh, just go to my website. It's thewillburkhart.com, or just go to my Instagram. Uh, has everything there. I have a podcast called the Will Burkhart Podcast. I basically give a. Where's my camera? Uh, I give. I give. A, I give like a behind the scenes look about what it's really like being a stand up comedian who's touring, like the real shit that no one talks about, like mm -hmm. the highs, the lows, everything in between. Because um, I've never seen that in stand up potentially uh, louder with the videos. Um, I've never seen it in stand up before, where it's like um, people just show how successful they are. Yeah, they don't really show like what yeah, how you got there. What about the hard shit? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like very honest and real about what I'm going through. And um, so yeah, that's every week, every Wednesday, and then uh, come see me on the road. I'll be in. When does this come out? This will come out in two weeks. Uh, I'll already, I already did Orlando. It was fucking sick. Uh, I'm gonna be in Omaha, Kansas City. That's so sick. Um, Hartford, Connecticut, and Boston coming up. So have you performed Bo cities. Boston before? Yes, a smaller show that I headlined, but now I'm doing like the main club. For, like, Let's go, cool, bro! So, Congratulations, dude. Thanks. Man. Honestly, to all comedians watching, uh, it, it actually is very informative. I watch this podcast. And oh, thanks. Yeah, because I want to learn about it because I'm new cool. to the game and stuff. That and makes it, me happy to hear. It that. makes it more like relatable rather than seeing all the successes. You know, yeah, like, not the, everything's yeah. all fucking sunshine. No, it's not, man. It really isn't. I'm still like an up and coming level, so it's like you really can get a taste of of you know even because people may see like how successful everything is, but they don't really know what's. What's really going on? You know what I mean? What are you really going through as you're on the uh, as you're on the come up? You know, so yeah. I appreciate you watching. I'm glad. I'm glad you can find it helpful. Of course, baby. So. I want to thank Purple Banter, Katya and LJ for producing this bad boy. Will Burkhart yeah. for coming on. Smoochy Town coming to a screen near you. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Yeah, bro. Thanks, guys. I've been on the road. I've been doing shows. 